Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you a clip from a recent live event where myself and Jim and Rick are going to debate Soulbound reward cards. Also, we're going to get into a conversation around how the game is helping new players or if it's hurting new players. What that's going to mean for the future growth of the game. And then we have to get into a little bit of DEC and even land. And again, with the focus and the intent of addressing some of the issues for the, for the growth from the player base perspective within Splinterlands. I hope you'll stick around for this one. Have an amazing day. Special thanks to Jim and to Rick. God bless, guys. Gladiator brawls are by far, by far, the most entertaining component of this game right now. Um, and it's in part because those cards are so hard to get your hands on. And that side of, like, anytime you, like, really restrict it, it's like, it's no longer now, can you throw money at it? Um uh whale what did what did matt call it recently he called reward cards something like whale games or something like that and he was talking about how essentially you can show up a week after their a new reward card is issued and buy a max level copy for pennies uh but with soulbound reward cards which are coming in the next couple of weeks i guess right um you're gonna you just can't do that you gotta you gotta show up and play to earn or when they eventually become out of circulation, there'll be an opportunity to maybe buy and sell them. It sounds like, what do you guys think about that? I, uh, I mean, my biggest gripe with the soulbound reward cards is me knowing full well, that it means I'm never, is that I just know a hundred percent that I'm never going to have a max. You'll never have a max copy, but you can, cause they're saying after they go out of circulation, they will be transferable at that time. Yeah. So not during, not while they're being issued, but after they've been fully circulated and they're no longer available, you then could move them to the market, meaning you could sell ones you don't want or acquire ones you still need. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when they're, cause that's uh, one more thing that is, it, they're not sellable. They're not rentable. It hurts new players. It hurts the rental market. Um, and it, it's also going to further hurt SPS price because, you know, for those who are extracting value, from, mm -hmm. this is not going to stop them from extracting value from the game. It's yeah. just going to force them into the one remaining avenue that yeah. to extract value, which is SPS. Yeah, that's probably true. But then of those so like yeah with stuff like that you have to say you can say that that is like so and then and then you have to like go a step further and ask is that long term really dangerous uh like because you're describing a short-term mechanic that would be painful for sps price appreciation but on a long scale is that fine or bad or somehow better and like there and i think there's maybe an interesting conversation to be had around that because you could imagine the people who are acquiring sps and who are selling sps at two pennies are in my mind akin to the people who are buying who are acquiring reward cards and selling them for a penny and to and i every time i see it guys like i look at the 60 cent gin bilka and Ooh. And I say to myself, like, this is, this is crazy. And, you know, if I had more money, I'd buy even more of them. And I am constantly buying these things, um, as yeah, often as I ball, can. Anyway. My, my point is, my point is these people, they want to sell their assets into these low, low, low prices because they want to sustain their sort of their, their operation. When, if they maybe just came at it from a different angle and tried to sustain their operations through some other means, because there's other things like, like we talked about a half an hour ago, getting creative here, guys, because there are ways you're not taking advantage of, um, flipping monsters is one of them, uh, and buying, doing bid buys to buy cards that are below burn value. But my, I guess my point is that I think there are opportunities available even now to people who are doing things like selling sps to continue their play um that would maybe that would maybe allow them to operate and if these people are selling reward cards or sps at these really low prices is that going to kill the game 
in the economy or is it really just going to let them burn out because i feel like if that's what you're doing i kind of think you're going to burn out here whereas people who are finding a way to accumulate these assets sps and um and cheap cards they're the ones in four years who are going to be like the whales in my opinion i, I mean a lot of people talk about the how something is going to hurt new players i i mean everything and everything is going to hurt some form of players um but the thing with if they make soulbound cards they're saying it's going to hurt new players because then like what they can't extract some form of value from the stuff they're getting it's also helping these these people that are getting rid of the cards at a penny each or 45 cents each for legendary cards whatever it is mm -hmm. for new players to pick that up and hold on to it it's most likely not going to be a bad thing it's a bad thing for these players in the short term. Mm -hmm. They need to not think about short term when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, I, I'm honestly a fan of new players being able to come in, pick up an Oceanus for two bucks. Like $1.36. Uh, even less than two bucks. Yeah, like this, this is a good thing for players that are coming in to be able to get good strong cards yeah. at a reasonable rate and if they're not able to get them at all because they're soul bound yeah. that i feel is going to turn away more players than it's going to help bring in and See? that's always the baseline of my considerations is how is this going to affect new players because without new players this game does die it's mm. not around five years it's not uh, going to to be around mm. so without the new players coming in we don't have a game in a few years which means our profits have gone to zero our assets have gone to zero so anything that is going to turn away new players i'm against and that is why like the idea of soulbound reward cards i was all on board with just not as the reward cards were getting out of chess i like the idea of having the soulbound cards but not as like a replacement for the current reward cards we already have the answer that we bought farm problem and that is player staking we don't need to continue mucking about with the existing reward system we need to implement the one that we've been waiting on for more than a year already can't you can't you also say that player staking is going to hurt new players because they're not going to have SPS and they don't know anyone to give them SPS? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes and this no. This is why I hate all of these arguments. <laughs> I mean, yes and no, because you can at least buy SPS. If soulbound reward cards are soulbound, you cannot buy them. And well, if, if you don't have players much SPS, know how to buy the SPS. Get them. I mean the we we do have ways within buy SPS through Transact. It's not great, but it's there. Like, I mean, it, there is at least a method to that. And then, you know, they can also hop in the Discord and ask somebody, get a delegation that, I mean, there are still uh, ways to get it done. Sure, it takes a couple extra steps, but at least there is a path. Whereas if it is soul bound, then there is no path yes other than play the game but it's but the thing and, is and but people also there's like a there's a lack of either maybe understanding or acknowledgement that soulbound reward cards the 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 focus is on the fact that soulbound reward cards would diminish the rewards for certain players um and make it like uh maybe disincentivize uh like bronze or silvers or whatever and i think interestingly it actually is it's actually the other way around it actually would help them earn more and and the way it would do so is by unlocking free cards that you can acquire through play um and you can say well your regular reward cards are free too i just play and i earn them sure but like these are still cards you're getting it's still collection power is still helping you fight at a higher level it's still helping you win these cards are helping you win and in that, they're helping you win more SPS that you're earning through your that play. 
and then maybe tournaments too because like we said earlier you got to find angles here guys it's not you can't just sit back and just like well the game doesn't pay me to play it for free i i don't know i guess i i can't play well get creative find an angle there's angles and um and uh and then it kind of comes back full circle because it's like i think i'm saying there are ways where you absolutely can still play it and make money and and use those soul bound rewards to be profit because they're earning you more victory which is more liquid currency in the game which is more profit but then you you could say and i think that that i almost i need to stop there and say we don't acknowledge that enough but then also i have to acknowledge in the same breath you're right about your earlier point that probably means sps is going to go lower but to me is a, like to my earlier point is that the end of splinterlands or is that actually a good thing i'm happy if sps goes to a penny if it goes below a penny i want a million of this stuff i don't care what the price is i want i believe in the in the future of this thing so i want more and more and more of it if people are going to be foolish enough to sell it because they want to find a way to nickel and dime themselves to be just kind of to get through this week or month of playing splinterlands i mean I just think that's the wrong angle. I think I think you want to acquire as many of these as possible. And so I don't see uh, Soulbound Rewards as, I guess, undermining the earning potential. I see them as being an opportunity to earn because they're going to be they're going to be uniquely yours. Other accounts aren't going to have them. They're going to set you apart in a way that existing reward cards can't and don't. That means more wins. That means more RP. That means more season and daily chests, more SPS in those chests, etc. I'll do respect. I have seen the argument put forth that you are answering there, but it is not the argument that um, we're not saying that this hurts your your earnings mm. because no, I agree with you 100% on that. While you can't sell the card, you can use the card to earn more. Mm. My issue with it is that you can't get the card except by winning and you can't like for a new player coming in like can you imagine starting out with to work your way up through the ranks without rick, having oceanus rick i think there's one thing that a lot of people aren't also considering is with these soulbound cards and getting it from a rewards they've also talked about rewards coming from a battle pass this could easily be acquirable through some of that it could be like oh play five games rather than win five games mm -hmm. because and playing I, five I, games is a lot faster than winning five games mm -hmm. and i'm fully in support of soulbound reward and it could be through both of these of systems and and if and when we see battle pass then I, that would to take into consideration Which but makes it a lot you're easier not for going players. to have the battle pass when these reward cards come out in two weeks and that is what i'm talking about yeah and it, it's it's another situation where just sps rewards should have been introduced at the same time as player staking and nodes and full functionality all together that would have been proper and would not have put us in this problem just like when Chaos Legion was introduced, if they were going to do the modern and wild split with Chaos Legion, it should have been done with Chaos Legion and not six weeks after Chaos Legion. Personally, yeah. I still think it should have been done with Rebellion, but that's another story. Like they're they're putting things that rely on each putting them out piecemeal, and everything is ending up getting messed up because of it. And that is why we end up being in the situation that are like we know that we already have the solution to this DEC problem in the pipeline it's called land and we've been waiting on it for two years already and until it gets here we're going to continue to flounder on DEC and there as long as they continue putting out more and more propositions about mm -hmm. how do we see how do we fix the this time that they're wasting <laughs> instead of just doing land and i know they're saying that they can work on nine projects at a time well work on nine different projects that are necessary to deliver on land and stop working on two of them and working on seven different ways to try and fix dec when we already know how we're going to fix dec and that is by delivering on land yeah i th i hear you um i think also though there is like a bit of uh it, like a one of the common 
critiques and what I'm hearing from you too a bit is like, you know, X, Y, or Z would be better than A, B, and C. And so I hate A, B, and C is a bit of what I'm hearing. And, and, and I'm like, well, maybe X, Y, and Z would be better, but they are humans that are like, you know, trying to run, write this ship and they are going to try what they see as being like the, the best path forward. And I mean, over f four years now, I've just come to a place where I'm like, they, are they perfect? No. Are they going to get it right every time? No. But I think the general consensus for me is like, these guys are smarter than I am. And on the whole, I think they are going to, I'm going to make more mistakes thinking these things through than, than they are. And, um, and so I, from that place, I always just come back and I'm like, you know, I hear you. And I, I actually like, I really want land out now. I, I do. I think my video tomorrow morning is called, um, um, my video for two, actually I might do, I'm not sure which one I'm going to release tomorrow, but I've got a video queued up here. It's called, uh, explain land and take my money. <laughs> and, uh, and I feel as though what you're saying, man, like if they like, just tell us, like, tell me what, it, how the burn mechanics of DC are going to work in land. Tell me how much potions are going to be for surveying. Tell me the maintenance schedule. Take my DC in advance. Even give me pre-sale, like sell me splinter coins. That is like a, like, uh, like a, almost a pre-sale on land investments. Now it's essentially become DCB. Um, give me a way to like pre-buy this stuff and tell me sp explicitly what I'm going to need. You got 10 plots of land. You're going to need so many potions. You're going to need so many surveys. You're going to need, and, and almost like, like write me a, write me a bill. Like at a restaurant, you get a d itemized invoice. Here's what you gotta, you're going to be paying for today. I'd actually like that because I'm super yeah. pumped for it. And I, and I see that. Uh, coming, I know it's coming, but I almost feel like, and in the last town hall, Matt said, somebody asked like, how much are the potions going to be? And he's like, well, I don't, we don't really know. Like guys, we got to know, you got to figure Put that stuff out. out and then don't change it. You got to yes, figure that out I'm on board with that. So, I, so I'm with you in the one hand of like, they, I want them to do land and they need to do it and it has to be done. And when it is, it's going to be a huge step in the right direction. But I also don't, I'm, I also am the feeling that, like we said earlier, like they're trying X, Y, and Z and I want to do A and B, C, but I like the X, Y, and Z also. I think that's possible. I think you can like what they're trying and wish they'd be more focused on your, your thing too. Um, and then kind of wrap it all up in the trust of four years of and two bear markets and um and and here we are and for the most part i agree like that they the team is doing a great job and absolutely moving in. but i can still i feel like it's still worthwhile as a community and cool <laughs> content creator for you know all three of us yeah personally um to you know, also try and, you know, take that bird's eye view of each individual step yeah. and say, you know, I think this one might be a step off course or in the wrong direction. Yeah. I still trust that, you know, the team is moving up the mountain, but if we are taking that, you know, kind of wider view of each step, then we can help to, you know, determine the course and, and make it to that goal faster and with less errors along the way because yes i do trust this team i do think that they're doing a good job over but there have definitely been mistakes and yep. steps along the way and the the more that we as a community can try and rise up and and you know help to guide away from those mm -hmm. because i know i mean matt and Aggie, i'm not saying that they're short-sighted but they're in the thick of it they yep. don't have as much of an opportunity to you know relax step back and take the wider scope because they're getting hammered for yeah. for the three of us you know we're invested in this heavily we believe in it we love this this project but we're not in it at that same depth mm -hmm. so it's a little easier for us to take that step back to look at the wider <laughs> scope and to get that sense of perspective that is more difficult for the team to get yeah there's a convert. There's a comment from um, 
eternal paw. And I, and this was on my mind earlier. I didn't want, I didn't say it cause it's like, you know, it's like almost a can of worms, but it's worth mentioning. He goes, what if, what if the land doesn't fix stuff? And I mean, what, what do you mean? like, I mean the idea of, um, the whole, one of the big things with land is that it's going to be a DC sink and it's, it's going to help resolve the 6 billion DC that are floating out there. And I, of course it is going to burn DC because they've, they've told us it's going to create survey potions that burn, that you need, that you're going to want to use so that you can maximize the probability of, of getting gold foils or, or higher rarity on your land. Um, and then there's going to be maintenance and there's going to be building upgrades, etc. All these are going to be DC sinks that are going to burn that DC forever. Um, and that's great. So it, in theory, the short answer is, well, it, 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 I don't think it it can't fix it. Like I don't think it, it, it is going to have a positive effect. Is is part of what I want to say to uh, Eternal Paw, but but I do think it's entirely conceivable that we're all just like give us land, give us land. Like land will fix it, and land comes out in the bear market in like right. It's coming out in the next I think three months ish. I, if I like, no, we're, we're we're looking at a possibility of land gameplay in. Like it, it's end of this year, best case scenario for okay. actual land gameplay, and okay. I'm, the, the survey potions will help and whatnot. That that's what we're looking for at end of this quarter. But what I'm talking about is actual land gameplay, yeah. because that whole system of swapping from resource to DEC to resource, that is where the actual utility of DEC and the burning of DEC is supposed to come in. That's how it was designed. Like the economy was based around that aspect of land gameplay and not having it is the biggest problem with yeah. why DEC is the way it is right now. That mm. was actually supposed to be the case back when DEC was the algorithm stable coin when it was the reward coin that was issued to us is it was supposed to be being burned consistently for land gameplay and that's why it got so out of during the sps airdrop because there was no nece necessity to burn dec and you had so many people just hoarding it and hoarding it and hoarding it for the airdrops and there was nothing to do with it that's yes. how we got to this situation because things are being released piecemeal and not as a whole yeah yeah i think i think that's true but then the it's it almost it almost begs the question like you know why why haven't they and i think if we if we're being honest the truth is it's complicated and we don't they haven't been able to in part because the non-card market and that that's all been i guess that's released now and then they've also they're doing the tech upgrades or whatever some of which is like i don't really understand how to fully articulate what that even means but they're they're obviously barriers it's not like they don't want to give us land it's like they are they feel as though every step they've been taking for the last two years has been moving us toward a place where we can and it's just like they can't show those steps exactly because when they do everyone's like hey that's not land that's like non-card market like you focus on land and we're all like and they're, they're like face palm because it, it's part and parcel yeah, of the no. same thing I, and the, that argument that i'm saying like I'm saying stop with all these reward changes and whatnot. I'd like, I'm but I mean, you can't like, again, you can't, you can't like it again. It's not like the, 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 we keep coming back to this, like a, B and C versus X, Y, and Z you want land. And they're like, we're doing land. And then, and then they, but we're also going to do this thing. And you say, well, don't do that thing. I really want land. And we're like, we're doing land. Right. That's, that's the problem. It's, they are just working saying. on a lot of things, and and he's brought up. It's like, all right, well, if they rather than working on nine things, mm -hmm. they worked on two things, mm -hmm. and one of those major things was sending eight people, you know, to do land. However mm -hmm. many people it is, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it's also of all right. Well, reward stuff's going to be out. All right, they also have to make the uh, the battlefield 2.0, mm -hmm. which not just for the battle itself but they're changing up the client and all the the guts of the software and everything mm -hmm. like that as well yeah because they don't want to push out land with all of this old software for them to have to reconstruct all the land stuff with the new software that they're mm -hmm. going to be coming out with so they have all this pre-work that they have to do before land can actually be ready mm -hmm. 
and, and I, I understand, understand that. that's what I'm saying. Like I, I get that that they can't just deliver process involved in that and like tech modernization, uh, battle 2.0, like all of that is part of that process. And I understand all of that. And I'm saying that's a huge process. There's a lot of to go into that, but that means we need to be focused on that. And there's so many other things that we're doing like that. Like what though? Like re soulbound yeah. reward cards? Cause soulbound reward cards are just like reward cards. But it's, I mean, that that's, uh, that's more time from the team. But I mean, we need reward cards. Like what one where we're at like 97%, like we need reward cards. So like, it's, it's kind of not even, it's not even like, at least with this, maybe there's other things. Cause like, I'll be, I'll admit like they're, they're, they're trying a variety of things. DCB is a thing that they're, 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 and they say it's relatively the non-consequential in terms of commitment, but you're right there. They're trying a, several things. I guess, I guess what I, where I land on this conversation is like, anytime the conversation is like you're doing it wrong the to me it's like the the impl the implication is we could do it better and i'm like no we couldn't like no i couldn't no our community couldn't like i feel like you know the the, the community crafted the idea of dcb and was like you know what this needs to be is like not soulbound that the community to me that's like foolishness like like exclamation point and that's the community that's the brilliance of this community um which I, I, I and you guys now know i'm kind of and we don't have time to properly articulate the whole dcb argument with 10 15 minutes left but i'm now on board with the ecb because it is soul bound now and to me that takes away this like essentially it was a kickback for like the richest of the rich who had tons of vouchers and tons of DC already and could move it over for a 20% profit and then could have transferred that into the market. Like Matt was like, that's not a bonus to him. Yes, it is. Like you get, you get more DC B in, in exchange for your DC. And if it was still transferable, you could bring that more, that 20% that more to the market and have traded it with people who, like me who would have bought it from you or maybe not me, but people people who maybe don't fully understand the options of, of, of making those sorts of trades, they would have been able to buy it for like, or sorry, buy it and get 20% for free and sell it for like, you know, uh, like a, a, a 10 to 15% profit on their DC, I would argue. And so transferability made no sense, but that my point is that was this community. And, and, oh, no, and so, actually. and, and so, and so I think we, we have to be really careful when we're like, man, Matt and Aggie are getting in the weeds and they don't really, they're not focusing and they, we don't, they just know if they did these two things, like what do we always hear? Bot farms, fix it. Like figure it out guys. You don't get it. And, and, or like land first. And, but then there's simultaneously like these, those are even two different conversations, but you know, like I, I just, I don't have time for it. I'd rather just say like, do like these guys have been through it and they're smarter than me and yeah i'm going to be critical like you said earlier rick like let's let's review it i was very critical of dcb um and i think i just was in my breath a moment ago but man like it, i couldn't do it better i'm just like i'm i i can i can nitpick here and there but man at the end of the day like i yes land 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 bring it bring it bring it but um man some things are going on in the background and and we can't we none of us understands them fully we just kind of have like we're looking at like through a what's that that phrase we're looking through a glass like dimly or something like that to to push back on that for just a moment though mm. um when you said that it's the community the team made it not so first <laughs> like when the team put out the proposal that was when it was not soul bound and then they just to a vote by the community and the community said no it soul bound that's when the change was made yeah no no it was a it was a mavs the, it was a mavs proposal so like all the like richest people in the game came to matt and the whole mav chat was like blowing up and saying like well, yeah i know that's where it came from so that's the community it's the team that, that actually wrote up 
yeah. the proposal uh, or the the blog post regarding mm -hmm. the proposal, put it out there, totally. and then it was the backlash from the community saying, "No, this needs to be all bound." So that then they put it to a vote in the comments on the proposal yeah. and that vote said, make it soul bound. And so that's when they updated yeah. it to be soul bound. It mm -hmm. is the community that said this is going to happen. It has to be soul bound. Yeah, I think also it is the community that started the conversation suggesting that that it not be that it specifically not be. And so it's like there, there, we come up with bad ideas and hopefully there are moments where are we then like a broader community says like, wait a second, this bad idea could be fixed into a good idea. And here's how, but we are constantly pointing fingers. We, the collective are constantly pointing fingers at this team, split it on this team and saying, you're doing it wrong. If you just fixed bots, or if you just figured out land, or if you just did my favorite thing, like fixed bronze rewards, or whatever the case may be, um, I, then the game would be perfect. And here we are, like un incapable of do even like, like we we just we can't we we are. I just don't believe that we are in a better position to answer those topics than they are. I just and I think evidence shows us like they've done it. They've been here for four years. They've survived what they've survived, um, and that doesn't mean that they're perfect, and it doesn't mean they have a free pass. But it's like all of these conversations boil down to they could do it better, and yeah, of course they could do it better. That's like not even worth saying. It's like, but the but the, what we need to come back to is um, like are they still doing it in a way that allows you to have confidence or not? Cause that's that stuff. We got to stop pissing around, like kind of footing around like the, the bush and saying like they could do it better because that doesn't get us anywhere. The question really is, are they doing it like operating in a manner that undermines my confidence in where they're going for the future? That question I always ask, which is, does this game have a future and is it fun? Are they operating in a way that erodes the fun? Are they operating in a way that erodes confidence that will be here in the future? And for some people, the answer will be yes. And that's okay. They're allowed to leave. That's the beauty of this revolutionary blockchain based video game. You can actually sell your assets, but that's the and it, and we should always be critically reviewing that conversation for ourselves so that we can we can make that uh, we can revise our own decision on that topic but i just think man it feels really it feels really like self and you know like i don't know i'm not sure what to say there just like it doesn't it doesn't feel sit right with me when we when we when we point we say why isn't land here yet do we even know what's entailed in bringing land out i have no idea and I don't so not a spell land <laughs> <laughs> good one bro so I, yeah i mean i just feel i just feel I don't know. I don't. I don't like conversations around. They need to do X, Y, and Z, and if they do it, it'll fix everything. No, it won't. There's gonna. It, you're gonna piss off half of the population if you do. If you get rid of bots, you're gonna piss off. Like maybe not half, but you know what I mean. There's gonna be many people who actually be pissed off because there's actually unforeseen consequences of every decision. Every single decision, even great decisions, have unforeseen consequences that have you know, down, uh, what's that downwind effects that you might not approve of, in, including bots, bots, everyone hates bot farms. But if we get rid of every bot farm, we're going to see card prices tick up. That's great because I, you want your cards to be more expensive. Is it great for new players? Guys, nope. it's not nope. be like, open, be aware of the fact that bot farms are making cards dirt cheap because they are literally free labor. If those were humans that were accumulating those cards, the cards would be more expensive. That's cool as an owner of these assets, but from like a brand new invest, getting new people into the game, you think that would be helpful or would it be a hindrance if reward cards were selling for 10 cents a pop instead of a penny in a bear market? Are we going to attract more players or less? I don't, I don't know the answer to these questions. But I just, I just think it's so much more nuanced than we sometimes want to give it credit for. And we want to say, you know, the problem is so easy. Just fix it. And I'm like, no, it's not easy. The, every, the most complicated problems have amazingly complicated solutions. And there's, you know, downwind considerations that you don't, you don't even understand until you get into it. And, and all of that, is, I agree with 100% yeah. that's what I'm saying. 
changes and these reward system changes to fight the bot farm like we need honestly like i'm a proponent of the bots like uh, we we can you know get rid of some but if we get rid of all of the bot farms then not only things a lot more difficult for players but we don't have a playable game anymore because we do not have enough human players to actually fill 12 leagues with you know active players at all 24 hours a day mm. to, to the point where you can click a button and get a match mm. within a minute yeah. where we don't have that many players yeah. and we're not attracting enough newer players and getting rid of the bot farms as you said definitely hurts the newer players but so does making reward cards soul bound because now not only can newer players get them not get them for a penny they can't get them at all well oh, they, see, i think that's an exaggeration but but jim maybe you can get in there buddy i've been talking quite a bit oh i'm, I'm perfectly fine with letting you go yeah well just that like i mean you know that they can that's a it's, it's an exaggeration to say they can't get them and I, I would still argue that a bronze player starting this game could earn. And I know that everyone would say, not in a meaningful way. I can't, not like they used to. And 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 I'm like, oh, these arguments. Like, because the question is, for $10, could you play a game and earn something? That's crazy. That's revolutionary. Could you earn, like, let's say, two chests a season like maybe I, I actually don't know but i mean with nothing at all like just the ten dollars you spend on a spell book and then the three thousand credits you get um to which you can fund rentals with um i i know that um gathering the magic has been doing this a bit and he from what i've been able to glean from his channel he's like he's making a like he's making headway so like I just feel as though it's always it's always about we're not going to get anything. We're never going to we never get anything. And I'm like, do you play any other video game? And then people will say, well, yeah, but those are fun. This game sucks. Well, what are you here for? You know what I mean? Like, I don't get it. It's like on the one hand, they're pissed because the game's not the most fun they've ever played. And on the second hand, they're pissed because their rewards are not like exactly what they would want. And I'm like, do you get some rewards? Do you have some fun with this thing? Then play it and just enjoy the trivial rewards and let them accumulate over time. And I feel like that's not most people's attitude. It's like, well, you know, three months ago I got more and then they nerfed it. Now I'm now I hate it because it's not what I used to get or whatever. And it's like just complaints and bickering. And it's like, you know, again, if that's how I feel, maybe people need to leave. But it's like, to me, I have always found this game fun. And I lately I've been hearing a lot of YouTubers saying like, this game is not fun. I don't get you. Like this game is a ton of fun. I have a ton of fun playing this game. And I've been doing it for years. And it's not because I get significant rewards. Sometimes I get like, practically nothing for my tens of thousands of dollars worth of cards i get practically nothing but i enjoy the game and if that's not you guys like don't play it don't play it and in fact don't buy the assets thinking you're going to find some way to get rich that's such a broken starting point if it's not fun don't play it and then if it's fun, ask the second question, does it have a future? And if you believe it does, wow, then move in. But if you don't, and and these are great topics like the bots or the or the you know the distractions around soulbound reward cards or the erosion of rewards at certain levels, or you know what I mean, like land and how long it's taken, the layoffs. There's a ton of interesting conversations you can have around is this game gonna be here in the future? And the answer isn't necessarily a clear cut yes. For me, I walk away confidently saying it is. And that's how I can hold $40,000 worth of cards and not bat an eye as they lose value because I, th I just have this vision of them being 10x where they're at now in the next bull cycle. And, 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 and actually, I just got to say before we got three minutes left, two minutes left, and I like quietly in the background, I'm buying, I bought 200, $300 worth of cards while we're talking. I bought a ruler of the seas, which I haven't had for forever, which I'm pumped to have back in my, my little, um, um, if you go to your Explorer, if you click on your profile, my Explorer, I got, uh, and then go purchase card sales. 
So I just picked up $170 max level ruler this season. Are you kidding me? Well, 100 and 70? 170 is fifteen dollars per BCX, which is below the low bid and like below like it's like a twenty-five dollar per BCX card or a fifteen dollar like I wow. mean I, I'm I sold like two three years ago I sold this card for sixty bucks and now yeah I I'm paying more for it. But I had a level three and it's four years later, by the way, so I, I'm okay with wow. that. And then I also get like another Oceanus for um, uh, for practically free. I'm, I don't know, man. Like I just give me more. I'm on board. I, I if if other people aren't, I get it. If you have concerns, if you're frustrated, I get it. Voice those, but also like wrap it up in like where they've come from and how the game's grown and 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 then and 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 hopefully either stand in confidence about where they're going or recognize your lack of confidence and just sell everything because frankly if you're not if you don't believe you shouldn't you shouldn't have your money in it but if it's fun and if it has a future man then i think these assets at these prices and this team like deserve our backing even now in the bear market, maybe more than ever. Thanks guys so much for hanging out tonight. Rick, thanks so much for the, the fiery conversation. Jim, appreciate you as always. Love you guys.